For the New York Times, this is Neil McFarquhar. As the United Nations Bureau Chief, I am often ambivalent about covering Secretary General Ban Ki-moon as he hops around the globe. It's true that he visits all manner of exotic, often closed nations like Myanmar, nations often impossible for a journalist to enter officially. As the world's top diplomat, Mr. Bond went there to press for free elections with the participation of jail dissident Dao Aung San Suu Kyi. But the downside is what reporters call the bubble factor. Detailed choreography shapes each visit. The entire entourage is whisked from one point to the next in speeding motorcades. The trip lasted just two days. I counted nine motorcades. You can't exactly ask the locals what their lives are like when you are hurtling past at 80 miles per hour. In fact, the people, the landscape, the streets spool past at such a rapid pace that I'm grateful when handy road signs remind me where I am. Mr. Bond's recent Myanmar visit was a perfect example of this kind of travel. He went to request to visit Mrs. Aung San Suu Kyi, long kept under house arrest and then on trial. To ask permission, Mr. Ban had to visit Naypyidaw, the remote, isolated capital the generals built themselves in rice paddies in the middle of the country. Such is the scale of the place that it cost billions of dollars. Eight-lane highways connect all the sprawling government complexes. The Buddhist pagoda is one of the tallest anywhere. Giant lotus blossoms, another Buddhist symbol, sprout in nearly every traffic circle. Fittingly, for a country that the military has controlled since 1962, recently changing the name from Burma, the city comes with giant parade grounds marked by triumphal arches. Critics mock the entire place as Disneyland for dictators. The one thing missing is people. Hardly anyone lives in Naypyidaw, which in the Burmese language means the capital. I would argue that the capital is proof enough that the ruling junta thrives on isolation, a point made by those who say economic sanctions are ineffective. Senior General Tan Shui, rarely seen in public, runs the ruling five-member junta. They are officially known as the State Council for Peace and Development. Mr. Bond met the generals behind closed doors. The press corps, however, was evicted from the meeting. We were stuck waiting for several hours out in the lobby by the interior fountain. The diplomacy was the main event that drew me there, but after a while, I began to feel like a fish out of water. The generals barred Mr. Ban from visiting Mrs. An San Suu Kyi because of her court case. I'm deeply uh, disappointed. Uh, I think they have missed a very important opportunity. Critics said he was giving the junta a reason to gloat about being accepted internationally while getting nothing in return. Away from the capital, Mr. Bond visited a camp for some people displaced by Cyclone Nargis. The storm killed some 130,000 people. He praised his host for building such a fine camp, but NGOs call it a charade. At 300 square feet and $2,000 per house, with wooden siding and fancy corrugated roofs, the houses are twice as large and roughly 10 times the cost of shelters specified by UN guidelines. Back in Yangon, I broke out of the bubble briefly. I went to visit the main pagoda, and stopped to gaze at Mrs. An San Suu Kyi's house across the downtown lake. In May, an eccentric American tourist swam across the lake to visit her. After she let him stay overnight because he complained of leg cramps, she was charged with violating the terms of her house arrest. I was pleasantly surprised, though, at the ease with which I was allowed to film all over the city. When we were with Mr. Ban, a government minder filmed us all the time. He would only go away when I waved at him. But no minders try to deter me in Yangon. I think it is because the generals feel supremely in control. No matter what message Mr. Ban carries to them from the world about improving their record on democracy and human rights, the generals remain inside their bubble. Their plans to hold what diplomats call a sham election under a sham constitution next year are moving full steam ahead. Reporting from Myanmar, this is Neil McFarquhar.